Good morning, Pastor Connor here. It's 7.30 on June 20th. Thanks for being with me today. Say, uh, as we're getting logged on here, uh, tomorrow morning uh, will be, well, tomorrow, the whole day, is Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all fathers uh, um, who will be joining us uh, for worship tomorrow. Uh, just so you know, I'm going to begin transitioning. Uh, I'm going to stop doing Sunday morning for morning prayer for now, and then eventually hope to move to, to five days a week. Um, it's a long story, just part of the, being the, the reality of being a finite human. Uh, it takes at least about an hour or more prep time to get ready for every morning prayer, and I love it. It's just that I'm finite and can't simply can't can't do everything that has to get done. So we'll be moving to uh, no Sunday this week, and probably by next week we'll be down to just five days a week. But I'll keep you posted on that. So I won't be here tomorrow morning at 7:30, but I will be here at 9 o'clock and at 10:30 for Bible studies for 9 o'clock for worship. So happy Father's Day in advance. Okay, so I'm really excited about what we're going to talk about today. It's one of my favorite sections of Scripture. I'm going to read a couple verses, and then we're going to talk about it. And uh, this is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, verses 42 through 44. And this is one of those sections of the text that <clears throat> you don't necessarily have to memorize it. But, I mean, that would be good. But 1 Corinthians 15 is a section of the Bible that you really want to have as a go-to. It, it, it's the great resurrection chapter of Scripture. Uh, it doesn't exhaust the Bible's teaching on resurrection by any stretch of the imagination. But if you only had one chapter in the Bible to talk about resurrection, this is it, 1 Corinthians 15. We're going to go to verses 42 through 44, and this talks about the nature of our resurrected bodies. And this, this is really exciting stuff. So if you've ever thought about what will my body be like, right? In the resurrection, what will my body be like? Because you see, the promise of the Bible is not that just we're going to die and fly away off to heaven, right? Yes, when our bodies die, our souls are with Jesus in heaven. The scriptures make that very clear. But that's not the end of the story. So the way I like to think of it is like this, that Christianity, scripture, it's not necessarily an upward looking religion, as in die and go up to heaven. It's a forward looking religion in that we're looking forward to the resurrection of the dead and the renewal of the earth. So your body is going to be made new, renewed, all right? And this earth will be renewed. What's it going to be like? Well, let's talk today a little bit about the resurrected body. So Paul writes in verse 42 of chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians, So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. Okay, these are just simply outstanding descriptions. First of all, Paul is using a farming imagery, it's talking about sowing, or we would say, you know, planting and so forth. He's taking a seed and he's sowing it or planting it. He's going to talk about the transformation then that happens from this seed that is sown in the ground or the body that we bury and the body that is raised from the ground, that sprouts from this seed, if you will. And the first thing he says is, what is sown is perishable, what is raised is imperishable. So it is sown perishable. Our bodies are perishable bodies. We know that, right? You only live for a short amount of time with this illusion that somehow that your body is not going to get old and die. Because when you're 18 to 22, 24, 25, 26, yeah, you can go through the motions like, uh, yeah, I'm strong and healthy and it'll always be this way. That's a very short period of life before you start to realize that death is a reality and that nobody gets out alive. So our bodies are perishable. But scripture says our bodies will be raised imperishable. So what's that mean? So here's the image I often like to use. Go down to your grocery store, go grab a can of green beans off of the, 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 out of the non-perishable food section and turn it over. What's on the bottom? There's an expiration date, right? So, I mean, the best we've got right now is our non-perishables perish. That's a little bit ironic, a little ironic there, but our non-perishables have an expiration date. 
because they perish. Our bodies perish. But what scripture says is our bodies will be raised imperishable, so no expiration date. Immune to death. I mean, that, that's absolutely remarkable. Okay? Number two, scripture says that our bodies are sown in dishonor. Our bodies are raised in glory. And this is absolutely astonishing. Right? First of all, the idea of the body dying is, is, is sown in dishonor. Okay, so death dishonors the body. You know that. You've been to funerals. Maybe you buried somebody that you love. The, the funeral directors do a great job of, of presenting the body and making that body look as beautiful as they can. But you know as well as I do that a dead body is not the same as a living body. Death dishonors the body. And here's what scripture is saying. God is not okay with that. He's not okay with death dishonoring our body. In fact, he is going to shoot our body through with his glory. This is absolutely astonishing. Right? If you study scripture on God's glory, a couple different ways you can talk about the word, giving glory to God, which is a synonym for giving praise to God. But God's glory is the overwhelming effect of God's presence. Right? So Moses goes up on the mountain, and he sees the backside of God's glory. He comes down the mountain. The people say, whoa, Moses, put a veil over your face because your face is too radiant, right? They, Moses has experienced God's glory. Isaiah sees God's glory and he falls flat on his face, right? And he says, woe is me. He thinks he's a goner because he's encountering God's glory with the seraphim crying out, holy, 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 right? You have water in the New Testament encounter Christ's glory and it blushes and turns into wine. I mean, so this glory of God is the overwhelming effect of God's presence, or what I like to call the wow of God. So God's not okay with death dishonoring the body. He's going to shoot it through with the wow of God. That's absolutely astonishing that your resurrected body, the resurrected body of the people you love who have died in the faith, they are going to be shot through with the glory of God. That's, that's astonishing, and what a remarkable promise that is. I mean, it, it's, it really is almost to the point of making you blush because it's so astonishing. Third, Scripture says that our body is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. I think we all get weakness, right? I mean, all you have to do is live for more than five minutes and you start to feel tired. Right? Our bodies get tired. We, we feel weak. And the older we get, the longer we live, the more this becomes a pressing reality. I mean, things hurt that didn't used to hurt. The strength that we used to have is gone. Like for many of us watching, think about this. How many of you feel like doing cartwheels or somersaults today? Yeah, probably not going to happen for a lot of us because the body isn't going to do it. So the body experiences weakness and death weakens the body to the ultimate point where it has no strength and no life left in it at all. Utterly weak and powerless. The scripture says God's not okay with that. He's not okay with the bodies of his loved ones being left utterly weak and powerless forever. So he's going to raise our bodies and shoot them through with his power. Now, I don't think we're all going to get superhero capes and be able to jump over buildings in a single bound, that sort of thing. But I do think we're going to know what it feels like to have God's power and energy pulsing through our veins forever. We won't experience tiredness as a result of broken bodies. Never again. That's exciting. And finally, the fourth thing scripture says is we will be raised with the spiritual body. Now, this is important. This is where learning to read our Bibles in context is really important. And we can't import definitions to words from our culture. Because in our culture, the word spiritual means non-physical. But that's not what the word means here. If you read through the book of 1 Corinthians, you'll see this. So when he talks about the, the natural body and the spiritual body, the natural body is the body empowered by or animated by the human spirit. The spiritual body is the body empowered by or animated by the Holy Spirit. That's Paul's point, and you can read through the rest of the book. Earlier in, in the book, he makes that very clear, the distinction between natural and spiritual. It does not mean non-physical. It means empowered by God's Holy Spirit. So here's what that means. I mean, it means a lot of things, but at the very least, it means this. It means, can you imagine waking up tomorrow, and for the first time in your life, being totally free from the temptation to sin? 
from the lure of sin. Here's the way I like to describe it. Years ago, we had a dog, and uh, this is before we had all these kids. We had a couple of kids at the time, I think. And we were making a trip down to see my parents in Indiana. At that point, it was a 14-hour drive. It's a crazy long drive. We took the dog along with us. You know, so we've been in the vehicle forever. We're a little stressed, a little tired. It's a long time to go with little kids and a dog, right? We get out of the van. We open the door. The dog runs off into the woods. She's just going to go run it off. Fine, have fun, come back later. She comes back a few minutes later, and we can smell her before she get, even gets halfway across the yard. Somehow, somewhere, she found some raw sewage to roll in. And she thinks it's Chanel number no. 5. Like, it's the most amazing perfume ever, and she's so happy to share it with us. And it's so repulsive. And I have to give this dog a bath before I can ever even get in my parents' house. After 14 hours, the first thing I have to do is give a dog a bath. I'm not too happy about it. Here's my point. That... Dogs are attracted to stinky things. I mean, it smells good to them. I don't know why it's disgusting, but it's true. But here's the thing. Sin smells good to us. That's our condition right now. Sin smells good to us. We're attracted to it. And so often, we roll in it. And then you know what happens? Eventually, you realize something stinks around here. What is it? Oh, it's my life because I've been rolling in sin. But you also know what it's like to want to be free from that and to struggle to be free from that sin because it attracts you. Even though you know it's ultimately repulsive, it's still attractive to you and you still find yourself rolling in it. But I want you to imagine tomorrow waking up for the first time fully and freely, fully and completely free from that sin and not even tempted by it anymore. You can finally for the first time smell how bad it smells and you don't want to roll in it. So this is the idea of being empowered by God's Spirit, that sin does not tempt God's Spirit. So it will not tempt you. When you are raised from the dead and empowered fully by the Holy Spirit, we will not be tempted to sin. We will not, will not go back to the stink. We will finally and fully be free from it. These are amazing words to describe the resurrected body, right? Imperishable, glorified, powerful, and Spirit-empowered. This is outstanding. Now, does it answer all the questions? I'm sure there are all kinds of other questions that are going to come to your mind. Go ahead, drop them in the comment line, shoot me an email. I'd love to talk about them. But what it does answer is absolutely astonishing. And it gives us such hope to know what's in store for our bodies. It's not some spiritual reality where you're just going to float around on clouds and so forth. No, resurrected bodies on a renewed earth. That's the promise. Here, it talks about the resurrected bodies. But think about it. Is God going to resurrect our bodies and just have them float around? No. They need solid ground to stand upon. And that's the promise of Scripture, which, which is woven throughout the whole book. It's the promise of renewal and rejuvenation and refreshment of all of creation. And our bodies are at the center of it. Okay, so much more to say. But let's take a moment now to pray. Father of mercies and Lord of life, we praise you for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. His bodily resurrection means our bodily resurrection. And we thank you for revealing what our bodies are going to be like. Imperishable, glorified, powerful, and Holy Spirit empowered. It's almost more than we can imagine. For we've grown accustomed to perishable, broken, weak, and sin-tempted bodies. But your word echoes with the promise of change, of transformation, of renewal, of liberation from sin and death. We will not hurt forever. We will not bury our dead forever. We will not battle weariness forever. We will not be attracted to sin forever because you are going to call us out of the grave and change us. We will wear your glory. Help us to hear that promise afresh, to celebrate it, to anticipate it, to imagine it, and to talk about it and encourage one another with it. Until the day you call us into your presence to await it with the saints in heaven, or the day Christ returns to bring it to pass. We are bold to pray this in the name of our risen and returning Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks for joining me. Make sure you hit the share button so other people can be encouraged by Scripture's promises regarding our resurrected body. And I plan to be back not at 7.30 tomorrow, but I will be here at 9 o'clock for worship and 10.30 for Bible study. I invite you to join me for both of those times. I look forward to it. Thanks.